Hey, hey, it's me, Cube. Hi, hi Cube. Hey, Fiend, you know what I want to talk about? VTubers. You know, VTubers are really exciting lately. I mean, I'm really interested in them. There's a lot of dynamics. There's a lot of interesting girls, you know, the, the, the interesting costumes, a lot of fun to be had with <laughs> VTubers, talking about VTubers. The, a lot of them actually look quite like magical girls. So I think we should just really talk about VTubers, Fiend. I, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. <laughs> uh, good morning, motherfucker, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when this podcast was just going to like fully shift over to VTubers because that's your thing now. I mean, I can't think of a single other thing we should talk about on this on this podcast that we named <laughs> that <your> record, <laughs> whatever the fuck it is. Uh, talk about. Yeah, we got to talk about it. <sighs> I guess. Last time I was very angry. I was in fact so angry that I genuinely did not realize the cube was drunk. I was so blatantly drunk. <laughs> like so drunk. It's only when I listened back, I was like, wow, wow, Cube's really sloshed. I was, but I was too mad. So, spoiler alert, the show didn't get any better, but I'm just, I just don't have the energy to be angry at it anymore. You know what? It's much like how we were feeling at the end of the last season of Ruby, you know? I was going to say, it was a very similar arc in terms of like, oh, it seems like it's showing some improvement. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. And then at the end, you're just tired. At the end of the show, you're just tired. And you want it to go away. Yeah. So here's the thing. So this is the last two episodes of the season, episodes seven and eight. Eight was delayed. And so there was like a 7.5. That was just a recap. So very reminiscent of Egg. The <laughs> anime industry is fucking collapsing. <laughs> and they both look like shit. It's amazing. And also the next season is supposed to just be four episodes. So really, we realize that this core and the next core are really just one core that they tried to be like... It's two seasons, actually, even though it's it's this season ends on a completely random note. And then you, you, you know, when you combine the numbers, it's the size of a normal season. Yeah. Yeah. There's a real lack of giving a shit left or like holding up any pretension that they're actually doing a show. Because like <laughs> it's been looking bad and broke and budget. Episode eight, for example, about 30 percent of the subtitles were missing, uh, we assume, because animation got the thing at the very last minute that's my assumption yeah and also there are there are scenes that are just stills there are so many stills there's a section where um felicia runs away and we hear running away sound effects as she's standing there and then suddenly she's away <laughs> that was that was in seven but yeah they, they kind of blend together because there's so much of these that are characters talking somehow in the middle of this final battle battlefield they just they just go away and they talk about things we already know about yeah this might not be at that long of an episode because um, Magic Reco didn't respect our time, so I don't think we need to respect this. And also, I want to respect your time more than ours was respected. You, the listener, and <laughs> you don't care about the beat by beat of this. There's no reason to tell you about the beat by beat of this, uh, these episodes. I mean, there's a lot to talk about, kind of. There's some to talk about. <laughs> there's like three beats, but they just keep repeating the same beat over and over again. That's the major thing with these last two episodes is they just tell you the same shit over and over and over. And in one of the episodes, it's stuff he already knew. Okay, so episode seven, right? So at the end of episode six, they're in fucking Faint Hope slash Chillation Land. Uwasa Mami and Uwasa Saruna come out and they're going to fight him. And it's we see a bit of that fight. Mami's billions of bad 3D guns versus uh, Yachio's back to billions of spears. She actually says at one point, I can make spears too. Or I can make as many yeah, as you. Yeah. <laughs> she just makes a billion spears. Anyway, the... <laughs> Mummy's just shooting a million guns all the time, but somehow no one ever gets shot, despite the fact that like the air is just bullets. Like that's all it'll be. Yeah, I, I was joking that by the time the bullets reach them, they they can't afford to animate them anymore, so they just disappear. So it's fine. You're safe. <laughs> yeah, uh, and they can't they can't fight them, so they run away. Now they manage to run away to a place. They just they just run to they they're in Chilation Land. They're in Faint Hope, and they just find a place where they can stand, and no one bothers. Yeah, them. they're like in a little amphitheater, and it has a roof on. So everyone's like, okay, I guess we'll we'll be pli polite and not bother them when they're in, when they're in there. Yeah, and then they're going to spend most of the episode. Like you can barely even recap this episode because the majority of the episode is the Kamihama girls catching the Mitakihara girls up on everything. It's all information the audience already knows, but we obviously need to see. The Mitakihara girls learn all of this stuff for some reason. Well, also, don't forget, a lot of these characters, like, random characters saw Eve and random characters saw other things, so they all kind of have to catch each other up on, because they've been ran running into different parts of the plot randomly. Yeah, but, but, like, this is an important thing we need to see. We need to have spend, like, most of an episode with the characters explaining everything to each other, even though we already know it. That's a, that's a great use of screen time. Mm -hmm. But it actually is a great use of screen time because what it means is that you can have still shots where you're just having mouth flaps. 
which is what they desperately need because they're so fucking out of money. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. They no money. Yeah. Before I move on, there was a couple of things I skipped there. There's a bit where they start to fight Holy Mummy and that, and they quickly make an excuse for why Homura's time stopping doesn't work anymore for some reason. It's because they're in Chalation Land, and apparently a, an aspect of Chalation Land is Homura can't use the time stopping, which is just like... <laughs> Yeah, they said it's like, oh, we're inside the monster. And it's like, yeah, you're always inside witch barriers when you're fighting the witches. You're basically inside the witches when you stop time. Shut the fuck up, show. It's like she uses time stops in the original show outside of witch labyrinths as well. Like, Yeah, she can do it wherever. It's just one of those bad writing things where it's like, you remember, you remember Heroes? Did you, did you watch Heroes? when, that, when I, that was I on watched TV? like a season and a half of it. Okay, yeah, it was rubbish, but... They they introduced like the time travel character who like you saw the cool future version of him, but that that character never got anywhere near the cool f- future time traveling version of him because, like a lot of shows that chuck in fucking <laughs> a fucking time traveler, at a certain point it's like, well, how do you stop them from fixing everything all the time? Oh yeah, he he had to get stuck in the past. Yeah, then like I think in season three he just like hung out in a hospital for the majority of it. It was a dumb show, anyway. <laughs> but it was just a thing of yeah, you can't you you have to you have to nerf them somehow or they solve everything. There are always ways to get around that. Yeah. But for some reason now they decided they needed a cop out. So. Well, because Homura has to be completely useless in Uumoe in, in this show, don't forget. That's it's very true. important. People have to carry her around. Sayaka carries her around, huh? <sighs> anyway, so while they're in that, they're in the that timeout time zone, the little paper crane comes and gives them more exposition because it's from Mifuyu. Uh, and so she's telling them, like, hey, th- th- you, th- I'm figuring stuff out. Here's a map. Th- that's convenient. And I'm going to go talk to someone about maybe how to help Suruno. They're explaining what they know of the plan. And then Mifuyu turns up to fill in the rest of the information, which was nice of her. So that our characters don't have to do any more work. Oh, yeah. Um, they, they can't just keep running into plot points forever. That's, it's, it's tiring. It's time for a plot point to come to them. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Whew. We cut to Mitama's wonderful doppel jar zone. And Mitama's still evil. No, like, she's neutral, Phoenix. <laughs> so, like, Momoko is still there. Ren is still there, but she, she doesn't talk anymore. She's not a character Well, she's, anymore. like, sleeping through their entire conversation, like, face down on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Momoko, you know, has a go at Mitama again, and Mitama's just all in shadow. Going, oh, I'm just neutral. I'm not doing anything. And I keep putting this out. In the game, when they talked about her being neutral, what that meant was that she helped both sides and, and help in the form of coordination and grief seas. In this show, she's doing so much for the Magius. Like, she's essentially part of the team. And all she, and I, like, she's not, she's not giving the other magical girls anywhere near the level of support she's giving the Magius. It just, it doesn't balance out. It's, yeah. It's just. And it's like, she uh-huh. seems to just live in this weird zone now, so if you're not with the Magius and need to get coordinated, I don't know, you don't even know how you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mifuyu turns up. You might remember that Mifuyu, uh, a few episodes back, was told, hey, stop doing bad things, and that worked. And she tried, she tried that on Toka, but Toka's crazy, so that didn't work. Now she's going to try it again, because, you know, second time's a charm. So she says to Mitama, hey, I know you said you can't fix the Permadoppel girls, but tell me how to fix Saruno. And she's like, no, I can't. Because I'm evil. I'm neutral, which means I can only help one side. <laughs> and then Momoko has a yell at her. So this is Momoko's arc that we get this episode. <laughs> I'm tired. Is that she admits that she doesn't know anything about Matama, and apparently doesn't know anything about Kaede or Saruno, and she knows that, and she deliberately never wanted to know anything because she was afraid of knowing things. Which I guess does explain why she joined the Magius, because like... <laughs> The only way these characters could do it was if they don't ask any questions. So I guess that lines so up. So violently incurious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other thing that happens is that, like, you know, Kaede has been turned into a doppel monster. And b- before b- um, Mifuyu shows up, Momoko's asking Matama, hey, uh, can you change it back? And Matama's like, no. She's like, oh. And then she finds out that saruno has been a bastard. And she's like, what? What? Oh, no. Ah! It's, such a big, it's such a different Oh, Momoko, reaction to yeah. Like- <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and it's so funny because it's like, wait, Suruno's been Uwasa. Oh no! And it's like sh- she was Uwasa by these people you've been working for because you know you didn't care what they were doing, and also you haven't wondered about Suruno this entire season. <laughs> Everyone has to be reminded that these people exist. <laughs> They're friends. <laughs> so after Makoto tells us about how she was afraid of ever knowing anything, so she- <laughs> wait, who's Mikoto? <laughs> Which one is Mikoto? They all have it. M- yeah, names. no, there's too many fucking M names in this. Sorry. Momoko. 
After she gives a little speech about how she never wants to know, never wanted to know anything. Vintama gives us her backstory. Now, you might remember as well, we discussed this in the pod, but I think, I can't remember, but in the game, something they didn't get into all that much, like at least in the first arc, was that Mitama's wish was partially that she wanted to be responsible for the, st- the destruction of Kamihama. That was her whole wish. Because, like, she hated that she came from the poor area, the, da- the Daito Ward. Yeah. And she'd had to put up with a whole bunch of awful shit, and she just wanted the town destroyed. So we thought, like, this time she's actually more actively involved in trying to destroy stuff. So maybe that's what they're going with this time? No. But what's the backstory, Cube? What's the backstory? Uh, she can't fight witches on her own, so she became a coordinator. But when, because she's a coordinator, she can see girls' hearts. And sometimes you see a nice girl. She's actually got a dark heart. She, you, you, you see her in a silhouette stabbing a pillow, and you're like, "That's a crazy bitch." Oh no, that that might hurt me. I, but I'm gonna not. I'm gonna shut my emotions off or whatever, and I, I pretend I do not see it. Emoji. And then, so because of that, uh, she, now she works for Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the idea is she was exposed to too much darkness from other people, so she wants to stay away from other people because they hurt her too much. And then Momoko knows how to fix this. It's hug. Time for hug. Yeah. And she says, let's be friends. I want to support you. And she's good now. <laughs> she she turns. She's good now because she had a hug. Yeah, so she's like, I'll tell you. It's time to play the really uplifting music. And she says, hey, you need to connect with the Uwasa girls and then maybe they'll turn good again. Woo. Now, okay, so here's where there's some conceptual stuff in these two episodes that kind of works, I think. Tell me about the, about the things that work. Going back to the game, the thing with Saruno and her becoming an Uwasa and stuff, that moment and the girls breaking that out of her and fighting her made them uh, sort of wake up to the fact that Saruno had been kind of putting on a brave face, but she was actually dealing with a lot of awful shit. Because everyone was dealing with their own stuff too, they hadn't quite realised just how much pain she was in. That becomes their way of like helping her out of this, is that they they realise, oh fuck, like we haven't been paying enough attention to you. We're really sorry. Yeah. The way they set up the conflict here is that the solution to get it, to breaking the Uasa out of Saruno is that you have to connect with her. But when you do it, you have to picture as clear an image of Saruno's true self as you can in her mind, otherwise you won't split her away from the Uasa. <laughs> Fast forward to the end of the episode, the girls go back and they attack the two Uasas. And Sakuga happens, characters move towards the screen and then away from the screen. The Mitakehara girls go for Mami because they know her, whereas the um, Kamihama girls go for Saruno. In particular, Yachio goes for Saruno because she knows Saruno so well. And she's thinking about how, you know, you always wanted to be the strongest, you're, you're such a brave girl, no, 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 no. And she does the connect and it doesn't work because... That isn't Saruno's true deal. And this is the point where they go, oh, wait, shit, we had this all wrong. I think on a conceptual level, I thought as a way to translate what happened in the game, this could have worked, I felt like. Sure. I mean, it just kind of happened in the game, but without the creepy pasta breaker part, part, right? Yeah, this was this was like a darker version. I, d- I don't remember the, if, whether or not they needed to, the, the whole connect thing was introduced in the game, but... Pa- I think in the game they just kind of talked it out, but well, they do go into like some kind of dreamosphere. Yeah, and they get it. They get a look in. They get a look inside her mind and stuff. But I, I don't know. I, I guess I thought like as a as an explanation for why they did the creepy pasta Saruno at the end of this, where she's all broken because the, they attacked her without being able to split her in away from the Uwasa. I thought that's actually not a bad idea in terms of how to get that idea across. I guess I think the only thing it loses is. Like a lot of things in the show, the characters just sort of get told what Saruno's problem is in the next episode because <laughs> they're just shown everything. Whereas in the game, I think Yachio, from memory, managed to kind of nut some of this out herself. Like she realized that. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? I'm sorry. This is the fact that you, used, you said nut some of it out, which is a turn of phrase I didn't, I'm not familiar with. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Use your, use your nut, your noggin. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I thought too. <laughs> uh, filthy Americans. But, but yeah, yeah, it's just it doesn't work, and then they're shown, and then they're like, "Now we get it." Thanks for the exposition. But so here's the thing: when it no go good, the big like beat that the episode ends on is super creepy pasta, broken dolled Saruno covered in blood, 
And I really like the animation during part of it. I think it's really good and creepy because like the way she moves is very broken and unnatural. And it has a thing going on over her voice where she's you saying, you know, like, no Taiko, I'm the best. But it has like, you know, that reverb lower version. And, and it is pretty creepy when she's just like, I'm the best. Yeah, like she always is. But but, you know, now it's all just a broken, creepy doll thing. And, and I and I like it, but it's very like... It's fun as a creepy pasta image, not so much as like an element of this story they're telling. <laughs> yeah, for for a couple of reasons. Like, like first of all, when you initially cut to that shot of her face down, bloody on the ground after it didn't work, <laughs> so I, 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 I I laughed. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it's not supposed to be funny, but it's funny. <laughs> no, but it's it's just it's just kind of a bit too goofy. And secondly, the thing with the thing with her being broken like that is like. Okay, I can see how you could look at the broken doll thing and go, oh, okay, this is an interesting way of using an aspect of the law, which is that the girls are essentially liches. See, I don't think that's what most people took away from that even, though. Like, that's something that I realized, like, thinking about it a couple steps in. I, I feel like I did see people talking about this idea, like, you know. Yeah, I'm sure some, some thought of it. They're essentially animated corpses, so they can be broken in this way, but still move and still be alive. But the thing is that her, like, doing that because she's injured actually isn't a big deal because she will heal. That's what they do. They all heal. Like, the them being broken, it doesn't hit me the same way. Like, I think I was saying, Kip, if, if there was a thing where the Yuasas were using the girls' bodies in an unnatural way because that is something they could do, but most girls don't do it because it feels too weird, I thought that would have been more interesting. Whereas this is just like, oh, yeah, she got really badly injured, but she's going to be fine because... That's how their bodies work. I just don't think it was that impactful. There's a couple see like shots where it looks like they're trying to do that doll like movement even before this scene, but it's so mm. budget that like Suruno keeps attacking and she's on screen for only as long as she absolutely has to be, and then you see someone like get hit and and they're in a different shot because there's no money. Mm -hmm. So that might have been their idea, and they just couldn't they couldn't do it. Yeah, that's another time. We should also mention as well, there's moments of actually decent animation in the fight to um, pin Saruno down so that Yachio can do the connect. There's a couple of bits that are bad, but there's, there's one particularly nice shot of um, Kyoko spinning around. This is a thing I noticed and had this steal in my opinions. Yes, credit, 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 to Cube, credit to Cube for seeing animation. It's just funny that, like, yeah, Saruno, they go to this effort. How do they pin, how do they pin Mami down? <laughs> Oh my god. So Sana surrounds her in shields and Kyoko wraps her barrier wrappy things around the shields and Mommy's just in the box for like half of the next episode. She's shorting as Mommy. Yeah. She's just in the box for a while until they're ready to deal with her. Yeah, I, I compared it to you put a bird in a cage and you put a blanket over it and then they go sleepy. It was just funny because like, it happened so quick too. It's just suddenly, chonk, she's in a box. Yeah, and, and then she's just in there being like, it's fine, I'll save you. And they're like, oh, we don't know how much more we can keep her in there. She had 50 million gun. There, there is a, Yeah, the guns are still outside. There, there is one funny bit where like you can just see like Yoko's just standing outside the box going, um, as like um, he's just like, donk, donk, donk in the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you just saw this like super battered, broken Cyrano. So they're like, uh, I guess we don't want to try doing that then in case it goes like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're just sort of, she's stuck in the box. So. so the thing is like, they're so fucking freaked out about her being broken like that. But this is why I don't think it's supposed to be like, oh, this is just an aspect of, you know, magical girls. It doesn't really come up a lot because everyone's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's all broken and bloody. Oh, fuck. She's destroyed. And and no one is like, oh, yeah, but because we are magical girls, she it, all that really matters is her soul gem and she'll be OK. No, no, that's what I mean is that like they, they're acting like this is a big deal, but it's actually not a big deal. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. That said, I think Yachio is more disturbed by the fact that she got this wrong in terms of she had the wrong the wrong image of Saruno in her head. Yeah. But she's realizing that she's missing something. We kind of skip past some of the talk in the fucking timeout zone. I, I w wanted to bring up something that I think I was talking about last episode where it really does seem like the theme of this season is... You girls, you know, you signed up for this and it's your responsibility to suffer for it and don't try to get out of it by putting it on other people, you, you uh, dumb yeah. cowards or whatever. And it's just very, it's very strange because obviously the whole thing is they didn't know what they were signing up for. So shut up. Like it, it's halfway to a good bit because like there's a, there's a bit where like Yachio is almost telling Sana and um, Felicia off for joining the Magius, but then is like just forgives them immediately. Felicia is, is saying, look, we're still going to turn into witches. Like, we, you know, we, you, the only reason you haven't done that yet is because of the doppel system. 
Yachiro goes on to say that, like, I don't want anyone else to suffer for my choice, which is the idea that was also in the game. You're meant to be pro that. Yeah, other people shouldn't suffer for, for her choice. But it's, yeah, it's tacked on to that, that thing about how, look, we made a deal. That's the price we have to pay. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, no, you don't you don't have those two things don't have to go together. You can not want other people to suffer for your mistake while also saying we were tricked. <laughs> and there's also this mix that she has between like, hey, we'll just support each other and then we'll never become witches because we'll we'll be so strong and, you know, put it off the inevitable forever. But also this is the price we have to pay karmically for this. And it's very important that we pay it. So it's like, fucking which is it? <laughs> yeah. Pick a side. Yeah, like you say, it's been running through this whole show, and it's pretty off-putting. If I had to guess, I'd say it, it comes from that apparent general thing of that Inu Curry just wanted to make the anime nastier and creepier than the game. Like, everything's a bit harsher and darker and edgier. Yeah. And that just, just sort of feels like it fits that pattern. It's silly. Oh, the, no, no, there's one other thing we've got to mention. It's like, it's just, there's nothing to talk about. It's just an image. Felicia uh, runs away in stills, because it, it was just the Kamehameha girls talking. And then suddenly... Someone says, hey, should you be talking about this right now? Cut to the Pataki. <laughs> the <laughs> is, is this about Sayaka? Is this about Sayaka? Yeah, yeah. It's that shot of the four of them. It's my favorite. Stand with the leggy out. Yeah, it's one of those shots where it's very clear that Sayaka was supposed to be on a wider object than the background people ended up drawing. So she's just sticking the leggy out real far in the air as if it's on something, but it's not on anything. The, the anime is broken. <laughs> The anime is over. Even aside from that, the, the posing is so extra and over the top. And the Matagihara girls do this a little bit in this, in this, this like these two episodes. It just kind of you cut to them and they're just being weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's is that episode seven? Was there anything else you want to talk about? I want to say like I feel like they really could have made it a a thing in terms of like obviously everyone has to die at some point, right? So I feel like the thing that they could have come to, like the acceptance they could have come to, is like look, and it's just one of those things where you know pretty much everyone is kind of in a, a way putting off the inevitable of death. So we just have to do the same thing, except that our death happens to be becoming a witch or whatever. But, you know, we can make the most of our time in the meantime or whatever the fuck. Mm, yeah. But instead, it's just like this weird uh, Schrodinger's it's OK because we'll die, but also we won't. <laughs> so it's fine. OK, you know, that, like to to be fair, there's there's another bit in this episode where when Felicia is saying, look, I still don't want to turn into a witch. We still need to find a way to fix this. And Yachio is saying, don't worry, I'll always protect you. You know, I'll always stop that from happening. And then she's saying, well, and then Felicia's saying, well, what about you? And yet she's like, oh, I'll, I'll figure something out. And that's when Felicia cracks the shits and runs away, calling her an idiot. Yeah. This was another thing that I thought conceptually and even sort of semi-executionally kind of worked okay in these two episodes. The resolution of this is in the next episode. It's like episode eight, they replay the broken Saruno thing because I guess it looks nice and also they're out of money. It's fun. It's a spooky. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then a connect happens. And I don't know who's initiated it, but a connect happens, and now we're inside. Um, <laughs> Yachio and Iroa are inside Saruno's mind. This is the section that was missing most of the subtitles. Just about every line of Yachio's is unsubbed. So luckily, I had QP who could, who could translate it for me, because oh there's no way I would have understood what the characters thought or were thinking without it being translated to me. Because it's not like they say the same things over and over again, or have said them before. Yeah, I, we were watch partying it, and at first I was translating, and then at some point I just stopped because Saruno just keeps on saying, I have to be the best and the strongest because I have no choice. I gotta be the best and the strongest. I have no choice to be the best. It starts with Yachio saying some version of, I misread Saruno over and over again. They're in like a weird stage realm. Then we see Saruno, and we see her whole backstory, and the like. it can be summed up in a minute. It is... Bad stuff happened to Saruno, and she was sort of isolated from everyone, and things just kept getting harder and harder, but she just kept putting on a brave face and burying the pain until it got to a certain point when something tipped her over the edge, and she couldn't take it anymore, and that's why she joined the Magius, and that's why she ended up being an Uasa, because she, she just couldn't... Well, it, it's, it's vaguely suicidal. It's this sort of thing, I just, I, you know, I, I don't have any energy left. I can't keep doing this. I don't care what happens to me anymore. In terms of what actually happens plot-wise, it, it, it goes through all the stuff that we know, know from the story in the game. Is the first She's with uh, Yachigo's second go at having a team. Mel dies. Saruno wasn't there for it, but Mel dies. Saruno, to some extent, blames herself because she wasn't there because she had to work. The team splits up. Look, it's like Mifuyu disappears. Momoko forms her own team. Yachio refuses to fight with anyone anymore. And 
Serena is on her own. But it's fine. It's fine. She's going to be fine. And she keeps fighting and she's getting sadder and sadder and sadder. Now, the thing they added into the story here, because it had to be edgier, <laughs> they, they, I, I think this, like, it almost works as, like, an idea of what was the tipped her over the edge. In the game, what tips her over the edge, you sort of, it's sort of implied, is that, like, she learns about witches. Like, she learns the truth about magical girls, and that's kind of what throws her over. And it makes it easy. I guess it's kind of implied, makes it possible for the Magius to brainwash her and tie her in. It's just so weird, because, like, I don't, I don't feel like she needed... With this being her whole problem, I don't feel like she needed, like, a big, like, dun, 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 this is what broke her. Because the whole thing is, like, all these straws on her back. And so the, 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 the straw that breaks her didn't have to be, like, the worst thing ever. Yeah, th th this, this, is the, this is the thing that they have added to the story, which is that the thing that broke her was when they're at the memory museum, shortly before she disappears. Because Toku was showing them, essentially, Yashio's story when she was explaining all the elements of ways magical girls can die and how they turn into witches. For the first time, she sees Mel's witch, because she sees the scene of Mel turning into a witch, which wasn't something that Saruna knew happened. She wasn't there for that, and no one ever told her that magical girls turn into witches. Wait, so when Iroha in this dream realm is seeing Saruna see witch Mel, that part's supposed to be a flashback to when they were all learning things for the first time? That's, that's a flashback to them at the Memory Museum. Okay. I thought she was just now learning this internally somehow or something. No, 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 no. This, this, was, this was a flashback to right before she cracks. Okay. But, like, this is why I thought this, this almost worked. I think, like you say, I don't think she needed anything more than the witch thing to, to make her crack. But what the, the extra bit of spice they chuck into this one is that Saruno sees Mel's witch for the first time and realizes she killed that witch. Dun, dun, dun. Because Mel's witch got away because the team was fighting a witch they couldn't defeat and Mel witched out herself because she ran into magic. And then the other girls just had to run because they couldn't fight her. And then Saruno kills Mel as a witch. Learning that at the Memory Museum is what broke her. But they all watched that together and were together, right? So it was, I guess she just was broken inter internally and, and hid it super well? Uh, well, no, because they're all kind of half passed out during that section, you know? like <laughs> I don't remember it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, there's like in, in, in the anime, at least, like part of the briefing happens while they're like out of it. And it, like they sort, they sort of all slip into a dream. It gets very weird in terms of how... It sort of falls. But yeah, to, to me, it's just such a whatever reveal because I, I guess because I conceptualize it as, you know, like once they witch out, that's basically dying. Yeah, sure. But I can see how it's a thing in the original series, too. You know, when they first learn about witches after Sayaka witches out, they still think of her as Sayaka and think and want to see if they can try to save her. Yeah. And, and, and so this is Saruna, like this is Saruna learning the same thing at the same time, except she killed her without knowing. It's a bit over the top edge. And again, I don't think necessarily think it was necessary, but I don't hate it as an idea in terms of that was the thing that pushed her over the edge, I guess. Yeah. I will say, neither of us picked up on what this, the, what, that this is what the show was trying to say the first time we watched it, because it's done in a very abstract way. Someone in the chat had to point it out to us, and we went back and looked and go, oh, that's what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she would have learned it at the same time as, like, all this other, like, you will become a witch, blah, blah, blah. And I like the idea that somehow, you know, because we're in this iteration of the show, that's no longer bad enough to break you. <laughs> yeah. You have to have this extra, like, tertiary thing on top of it to be like, oh, now it's too much for me to take. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 the same, it's the same as, like, adding in the permadoppel thing. It's like, they just have to keep making it worse. Because, you know, oh, witches, that's old hat. Yeah. <laughs> Who gives a shit about that? Anyway, so yeah. So now they know. Now the other girl, Yachio and Iroha have been told that that's what's going on with Saruno. So they do the connect again. There is a nice moment where um, Yachio's not sure she can do the, do the thing. And Saruno Uwasa is coming at them. And then this is the other bit that I thought almost worked. Felicia comes in and starts yelling at both of them for being people who are just, like, trying to carry everything on their own and not coming to their friends and asking for help. Oh. Which actually did, like, as well, like, it's this thing of, yeah, okay, so we've, we've learned this about Saruna. She wasn't bottling it all up. But, but like, Felicia sort of turns to Yachio and says, you're just as bad. And that's true. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And it was, like, it's, it's something that is, we know about Yachio's character, and it was established in the previous episode. That's what was bothering Felicia, is that she wants Yachio to fucking ask for help too and not try to do everything on her own. It's very funny how how Felicia comes in. She like just a giant hammer comes in. It looks like it's gonna like smash Suruno, but it's between them. And then Felicia is standing on the handle because she likes to be tall. <laughs> there is another nice line where like yeah, she was trying to get herself ready to do this connect again, and Irua says to her, "It's okay to be weak. We can be weak together." 
Yeah. That's a, that's a nice line. And I feel like that should be the actual, if you're like wanting to put themes into this that aren't fucking stupid edgy nonsense, it could have been a whole thing where like, it's okay if we're all weak because like we are, we do all have each other and, and it links back to Kuroe's whole talk with Iroha and stuff. Yeah. And that's fine, but it's happening here in kind of like the middle of the story and it's kind of like, whatever. Well, fucking the end of the story. Like that's, that, that's what bugs me a bit is that like, this should have been. We have four episodes to go. <laughs> Uh, this this should have been the theme of the whole show. This should have been what the whole fucking show was about. Like I don't know, because like it, it, yeah, it works really well with the Achio story. To some extent, it it can work into Iroha's story because she starts off alone and develops these relationships in the game. To some extent, that's what that that kind of nice big turning moment for Iroha and Yachio's relationship, where Iroha kind of takes control. That's that's what that moment is about. Is Iroha saying, "No, fuck this. I'm going to support you. You're going to rely on me, and I'm not going to die." That, that, that whole thing, because she was so worried she was going to die. Oh, also, you know why it doesn't work super well in this show? Because everybody can create 10 million lasers all the time in, in infinity <laughs> power. So the idea is like, oh, baby, we're all weak by ourselves. I can only create one city full of lasers. Oh. <laughs> but that, yeah, that's, that's the other problem, is like, particularly at the end of this episode. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, I also wanted to say, before I forget, and, and we're always still on the Tsuruno stuff, so something that I feel like even the, the game didn't really... I, I feel like it was implied, maybe, but so Tsuruno, they don't cover it much, but she has good luck because of her wish in general. And so I feel like she should almost have something going on like Yachio, where Yachio blames her wish for people dying around her, and then Tsuruno would theoretically blame her good luck for not being there when Mel died. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, became a witch and stuff. But they don't really seem to work that into her thing. She says that she was weak or whatever. They do that stupid fucking, you know, treacherous genie thing with her wish, like they do with a lot of wishes in... Reco, like both the game and this, where it's the thing of, oh yeah, she won the lottery, but it actually ended up being a bad thing because her dad ran away with all the money or something. Oh, uh, but she has good luck, but not with that stuff. It's, oh, uh, sometimes she has good luck and sometimes she has bad luck, but not in the way that normal people do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, such, it's just such a boring thing to do, as opposed to like the way they did it in Monica, where... <laughs> You make the wish, but the wish is a mistake because you're not being truthful with yourself or something like that, or you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Whereas then this is just like, oh, ooga booga. Also, chat, I was trying to be strong and not bring up the Ruby thing. I don't need to make a re- reference to the Ruby D&D campaign where someone's power was to sometimes have good luck and sometimes have bad luck. No one's going to understand that <laughs> reference. I'm not going to reference it on a podcast. <laughs> I don't know if we ever talked about that in the podcast. I, I think we did. <laughs> that goofy ass. That goofy ass semblance. <laughs> Fuck it, let's talk about it. The, just real quick. You remember how semblances work in Ruby? And like, we already had Crow semblance, which like, there's, there's no way to know if it's actually a semblance. He just has bad luck. That's his semblance, apparently. In in the D and D campaign that Eddie ran, and I think Carrie uh, was one of the character, the players as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it's Carrie's character that has that power, that semblance. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Carrie's character has a semblance. <laughs> has a semblance which is sometimes they have good luck and sometimes they have bad luck and i really need someone to explain to me how that's different from life look i i understand like the uh, the concept is like unusually good and unusually bad things happen to him more often than to other people but one yeah apparently the way that it works is that he talks to a god like lady luck and i don't know how like the, how does that work in with the Ruby lore? It's very strange. <laughs> and it's, it's another one of those things where it's just, it's just, how would anyone know that that's the power is so goofy? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's very much like metal. It's, and then it's like, <sighs> no, you... we can't, we can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta talk about the Magookas. Okay, we'll get back to the Magookas. All right, so <laughs> they do the connect again. It works. They save Serena. Oh yeah, it's also it's fucking pisswick that they're the way that it worked is like okay, so it, it, they weren't able to save Serena this way because it turned out they didn't know enough about her, and so someone showed them all the information that they needed, and now they know enough about her, and now they're able to save her this way. It's like wow, good job everybody. 
good job. You had to go through all the hard work of being shown a slideshow to save yeah, her. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's like everything so far. They just they walk into a plot device. They're handed a plot device. Uh, anyway, so then and then they, they do it to mommy, and mommy's safe too. She's fine. We're not forgetting the arrow. We're get- oh oh, that's right. That's right. Thank you, the chat. Thank you, sentient chat. That's a more amorphous blob of people. Oh uh, yeah. They, they fucking to do the to do the second connect with Cyrano. Fucking Yachio and Iroha connect, and there's an arrow that's a weird angel Cyrano, and it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I don't, and, I don't and, get yeah. it. I don't get it. And, and, it's, yeah, and Angel to, Saruno on the spear. And mommy, it, it is a connect between Madoka and Saika that turns her sword into what looks like a like a bat, but flat, a flat bat with, with flowers. And then she stabs mommy's soul gem or bonks it. Well, she I don't know. She does, yeah, she doesn't stab it because it's not sharp. She sort of bonks, well, and she just bonks her in the head where the soul gem is, and she's fine now. I thought maybe it was sharp, and they just drew it that bad. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, I mean, because they drew a sword properly first, and then it turned into like a. It's either a bat or it's like one of those training swords. Um, I don't but it's hard know. to tell. It doesn't matter. Anyway, now, like like I was saying, the end of the game, there was a big raid event, where over like a couple of days. Everyone who plays the game collectively was attacking... Walpurgis. Well, was attacking Walpurgisnacht. The whole idea was that, like, yeah, it took every single girl in the city to, like, beat the shit out of this big enemy. That's how much it took. The show here, um, this section of the show at least, ends with Madoka and Irua doing a connect and they shoot an arrow and faint hope and Chalation Land are blown up and that's the end of that. And all the witches go home. <laughs> Yeah, the witches leave. Oh, and they also mentioned triumphantly <laughs> that Walpurgis Nax has, has detoured and is now heading for Matakihara instead. Yay! Yeah, she's back to her original plans and Homer is like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's fine. It's over. It's so weird. Oh, also, at the near the end of last episode, there was a great scene where they talk about how they need to use a connect to get the Uasa girls out of the Uasa, and Madoka's like, What's a connect? And obviously they had to cut right away. And I'm like, don't fucking cut away. I demand to see the rest of this scene. You show me <laughs> yeah. them explaining to Madoka what a connect is. Because you've never explained connects at all. <laughs> and also, yeah, because you just explained a whole bunch of other boring shit we, did, we already knew. And now you're going to skip this bit. It was always weird that they do it in the show. And so now that they like canonize like that is not something the Mitaki Hara girls know about. It's like, well, what the fuck is with the connects then? <laughs> <laughs> they run into a church where Toka and Nemu are. Someone, sh- I'm pretty sure it was Nemu, shuts the door so that only Irua gets in. Irua doesn't seem to notice this. <laughs> but she's the only one that gets in. And she runs up to Toka. She's saying to Toka, why are you doing this? She actually says to Toka, hey, it's not okay to kill people. Yeah, it's not okay to bring all these witches and trap everyone in the Oasa. That's not an okay thing to do, Toka. And Toka's like, oh, I'm doing it to save people. And, she, and, and they're like, yeah, she, Irua says, <laughs> so you know, why, why are you doing this? The girl I knew wouldn't have done this. And, and then Nemu steps forward. Sorry, no, no. Nemu zooms, Nemu zooms in. Nemu's, a still image of Zem, Nemu does a zoom and she's here. Nemo remembers everything. Nemo has remembered everything the entire time. She knows who Iro is. She, kn- I think, I assume she knows who Ui is. Yeah, that's the impression I get. Yeah, and now she's going to tell them. My theory that it is like a Nemu who knows everything and is just trying to speed run this plot is is correct. <laughs> <laughs> this, this conversation is just so weird between her and Iroha because she's like Tamaki Iroha, like so she knows who she is, but I don't really know why she's so familiar with her in the anime when she doesn't know. Because oh, she's been she's been fooling her plans. I think is the idea. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's weird that like she seems a bit flip back and forth between like oh yeah, because they did have the whole hippocampus conversation. Wait, now I'm trying to rem- cuz now I'm trying to remember in the last season when they first ran into each other and and Toka was doing the whole like I have no memories of you in my hippocampus or whatever blah blah. Mm. It's very strange that Iro has now like, oh, they're doing an evil thing. They wouldn't do that like, but last time you confronted them, they were already doing evil things and being evil. So I don't understand how we're still here. 
Yeah, she's still confused as to why they could be doing this. When it's like they've already explained, they don't know who she is. Something else is. I don't know. And 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 they've already been jumping around doing evil, evil talking like villains, like cartoon villains. <laughs> it's just that thing of they just waste our time explaining the same shit over and over again. Everyone just says the same things over and over and over. It's just they have they don't have any plot. They've got like they've got like about a third of the plot they need. So they have to fill in time by just having everyone explain plot points like multiple just over and. Ugh. It's amazing. Anyway, Kurawe. Yeah, so this is what really matters. Speaking of being in stories or whatnot. <laughs> Kurawe. We see a bit of her running away from some feathers. And that creepypasta other girl is talking to her and saying something about how you ran away from me. And then eventually Kurawe makes it to where the other girls are after the battle. And she can see them all sitting around talking happily. And she's about to start running to them. And the other girl grabs her arm and is saying, you don't belong there. You don't get to go there. You're different from them. So, and now on its own, sure, that's interesting enough. I guess, I don't know. Like she's got some dark past, but there are these title cards. <laughs> there are these fucking title cards. What's so funny about the title cards, Fiend? <laughs> Which just seems so meta. <laughs> what, what's meta about the title cards? <laughs> One of the cards that essentially says, get out of this show. You don't belong here. <laughs> you're not supposed to be in this show. You're, you're a show original character. What are you doing here? <laughs> Yeah, it says you're not part of this story. She actually has a, ca- a card that says you are not part of this story. Awesome. And it's true. She's not. <laughs> she doesn't matter. Obviously, this season isn't a season, you know? Like, I don't believe that it was ever planned to be a season apart from the other season that's coming next. But, the like, the Kuroi, we still don't know why she's in this story. They They hinted a little this season about, like, there might be more going on with her, but we're still not going to tell you, and we, we you still don't know why the fuck we added her. And and she's just she's just not connected to the plot. She helped Yachio once, and she helped Iroo once, but, like, that could have been done by anyone. That has nothing to do with who she is. Yeah. Or what her deal is. She's just, she's just here. And, she's, and, and it's also the thing of, like, we have to remember, she wasn't there for any, almost any of season one. And she pops up again, and she's taking up a bunch of screen time, and we just don't know anything. And she just hasn't really had an effect on the plot. Just the fact that they would have a card that says, you don't belong in this story. It's just- It's awesome. It's fucking amazing. And, and like, I was joking about the that shot at the end of the OP, where it's Iroha and Yachio and Kuroe all leaning against each other in chairs, and it's like, these characters are not all mutually supporting each other, hanging out. They barely run into each other this season. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a, a season of a show. That's a real season of a show we watched. Yeah, the last four episodes are coming at some point. Oh yeah, but 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 at the end, like the the Mitaki Hara girls, they 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 got mommy over the shoulder and they go home and they're like, good luck with whatever the fuck. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the fuck's going on, we don't know anymore. I'm, I'm fun. <laughs> Chad, is there anything that we that we missed that we really should cover? <laughs> Although this season end ends with Nemu saying, I'll explain everything and time freezes. And then there's the photo, the photo, because it's still really funny. There's a new photo of Iroha and, and Nemu and Toka and Iroha has her arm around that blank space where, where Ui belongs. It's so dramatic. Oh, OK. One other thing. One other thing I guess we can mention. Um, apparently in the JP version of the game, which is still going, there's a... Mitama Momoko jewel unit that you can get now. I think it's connected to a summer event. I was joking, maybe that's why they suddenly had to have this like really shippy scene between them in this episode that had like no lead up. It's because hey, don't aren't you invested in them as a ship? You need to get there. <laughs> I mean, look. To be fair, I think the sh- I- I- the game. I don't. I don't think they sort of the game shipped them, but the game did establish that those two had a relationship. Oh yeah, but but this scene is like so you know like them hugging each other. They're they're just so close to each other when you know there was nothing. There's just nothing going on there. Yeah, yeah. During well, the season. Yeah, it's it's all it's all established in one episode and then it's over. I, I don't necessarily think this scene was shippy so much. It was just like oh they're such good friends because everyone's good friends. Yeah, yeah. It's just like their their relationship with each other is so important. Anyway, bam, mermaids. Mermaids. So there's a duo unit they have in the game now where they're very sexy mermaids together. So that, that makes <sighs> sense. 
Oh, I also want, like, there is a part where Momoko and, God, there's too many fucking M names. Momoko and Mifuyu show up to the fight, to the group fight, and Mifuyu's like, you got here late, or whatever, and it's like, they came from the same place, I don't understand, it, but nobody cares, they're here now, what, fuck it, fuck it, fuck this, everything. This, I'm at a point where, like, why do we even, why do you even bother pointing these things out? The show is doing this all the time, it's so fucking broken. Is Reina dead? Maybe Momoko and Mifuyu left that room to come fight with everyone, and Reina is still face down on the floor. Maybe. <laughs> maybe a VA quit. I don't know. Oh wait, and <laughs> and before they leave, Mitama was like doing something with the Kaede doppel. Like she's gonna try to open that up and like save her, maybe with her Mitama powers. So, like, did they just leave while she was in the middle of that? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get resolved. I'm 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 assuming Kaede Kaede will just show up again. Yeah, she'll, th this will all have just been a non-issue because Misama just never bothered trying. <laughs> now, I I thought I thought we'd be able to escape Bad Maguka for a while. That's there's no escape from Bad Maguka. Well, there isn't because um, what's coming up? What's what's starting this season? Yep. It's not even coming up. It is upon us, Yukiuna season three, motherfuckers. You thought this was <laughs> over just because they destroyed everything that had anything to do with the magic system in their world and everything was resolved? Fuck you, season three. <laughs> <laughs> you thought Togo couldn't get more Moe nationalist? Holy fucking nah. shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. One, one of the teaser screenshots they released. Holy shit. Was Togo dressed as an, imper as an imperial Japanese World War II soldier? It's, oh my god. <laughs> this might have to be one of these ones that Cube watches and tells me about because I, I don't. I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, and the first episode is out, and apparently it's like 90% fucking Moe nonsense. So I I don't know, maybe, like, we might cover it in chunks, but I don't know if it's even going to be the kind of thing that would be worth covering um, in groups of two episodes, because I don't know when things are going to start happening. <laughs> yeah, it might just be one we do as its own episode. I'm going to go away and watch some good shit. Um, that is definitely a thing I'm going to do. We should definitely watch some good shit. Yeah, I started uh, editing the Sailor Moon podcast finally, and, and and that's good shit. We have good times. I want to go away and watch some older stuff. Uh, I've been meaning to watch Cyber 6 for ages, and I've also got Gunbuster on my list as well. I'm going to try and watch those and talk about them. Heck yeah. And all the things we usually promise. <laughs> but uh, yeah, fuck this show. Bad show. Yeah, that was Don't terrible. Don't like it. it I, I mean, it might, look, it might just be the mood I'm in. It might just be like eight weeks of lockdown with a month to go. But like Egg was bad. And I got really sick of Ruby. I feel like I had a harder time watching this. And it's nowhere near as offensive. And, and I think in some ways it's not even quite as broken as Ruby. But it's just, it's so boring. At some point your brain does start sliding off of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's boring and, 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 but also like intensely frustrating at the same time. Like you're watching the same things happen over and over. But the things are so fucked. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's just like you just want to shake the show and like turn it upside down and shake the coins out of its wallet and be <laughs> like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see you guys soon, either for better things or more. Fuck uh, no, weeks. fuck you. We have to. Ha we can't sign off like this. Well, we we can't <laughs> leave people in that state of mind. <laughs> God damn it! We're here to have a good time, fiend. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, fuck that. Go watch some good VTubers. Watch the Nene. Didn't you hear about Nene? She's very good. Hello. Good morning, motherfucker. <laughs> Fucking cute. See you, Nene Chi. Oh. Also, did, did you say Pisswick? Yeah. Piss weak. What? <laughs> weak as piss. Piss weak. <laughs> I anytime I've heard someone say that, I thought they were saying piss weak. No, piss weak. Weak as piss. That's why it's like it's. Oh, <laughs> that makes so much more sense. Obviously, what I should have thought of is that people are saying that something is as weak as pee. Yeah, yeah. That makes way more sense than piss weak. <laughs> it's. I think it was initially used to refer to bad beer in that this beer is weak as piss. But <laughs> stop piss. What is piss weak? Oi, fiend. Oh, Don't make fun of my <laughs> accents. It's me talk. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, Fiend, I'm going to need you to, to stop bullying me. I'm just a simple Texas <laughs> girl that thought that I was a piss wick and not a piss weak, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That just, Don't that make just me really lassie you up. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I normally hate when people make fun of other people's pronunciation. Uh-huh. Uh, that's really funny. I'm glad you could enjoy that. It was all in good fun and all, all in good fun. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Sorry, Cube. <laughs> Tell me about Madoka some more. 